we live people deluded i'm back again thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time first things first people good morning i hope you're all doing well and safe whoever you are wherever you are as i say good morning of course good morning good afternoon good evening and obviously good night whoever you are and wherever you are on this earth and thank you very much for tuning in first things first as well please make sure you've hit the like button i know you was gonna do it you've forgotten there's your reminder also as you know it's watch along business as well uh, today as well it's a long day of content from dg as you lot know it's olympiacos versus arsenal so you know you're gonna get a watch along i'll be live from 7 20 so open up another tab set up the reminder and the necessary things for that if you're not going to be there at least hit the like button and do what you can to get the message out there now, apologies, people. One second, my mic is all over the place and it's the wires are getting tangled. If you're over here in the UK, it's a windy day, people, and the wind says hi. You know, it's been quite jarring. You know, it woke me up today at about four o'clock. Quite mad in that regards. I hope everybody's safe. Hey, right, Courtney Raymond, wavy name, man. You know, only real G's got that first name. Big up yourself, man. I hope you're all doing well and safe. Jay, I see you. Josh, Skyter, Christian, I hope you're doing well. You know, Ethan isn't in the mood for it. He's saying Arteta's a dud, unfortunately. Everyone's allowed their opinion. Big up yourself regardless, man. You know, we're going to get into it. There's a couple talking points and things like that. So, yeah, man, I hope you're doing well and safe. What's my guy Peter saying? You know, this guy is always one of the first to comment, always in the live streams. Peter, I say this every time, but seriously, mate, and to everyone, I appreciate it. But what have you said? You said another day of top content to get me through work. Can't tell you how much it helps, man. I can't tell you how much things like that mean man you know it's crazy you know it, for me as well in tough times it, it just lets me know that you know there's people out there that care there's people out there that like your content so never give up mate it's as simple as that you know and i really appreciate that man so right jay woke i know you've been missing for a second man i appreciate that regardless you know you're here man you know push towards your goals if you ain't got you know i'm happy if you're pushing towards goals you shouldn't have time to listen to me I'm lying, open up another tab, but you get the point, man. You should, you know, do what you need to do. Steve, you got nothing to do with Arsenal, so of course I appreciate it, man. Um, I appreciate everyone. I guess you lot are not gonna get me get let me get away from briefly speaking about the game. Um, I don't want to, I, I, like I said, I want to get into this Arteta business and things, but Jack is saying, What's good, DG? How are you feeling about tonight? I think. Truthfully, I'll give you the truth. I, I'm, I think I'm feeling a bit complacent, you know, not about Olympiacos or anything. I just think I'm not in game mode right now. And obviously I'm not a player, so it's not for me to be in game mode, but I'm not in game mode. I'm still in that space of seeing Haaland doing what he's doing in the Champions League and Bappe last night. Well, not so much last night, but you get the, you get the point in the Champions League um, and things like that. I'm not really in game mode, but trying to put myself in it to answer your question, have to win in it. You know, every time there's fighting talk from everybody involved with Arsenal Football Club, we're, we're past that point, in it? The rally talk, go out go out there and do it. The, the doing is expensive. It's a currency that only few people have in their pockets. Likewise, talking is cheap. That's why you, I and everyone in theory can chat until we're blue in the face. And last time I checked, I was black. So that tells you how long I could talk for. Do you get it? So... Um, it's put up or shut up. I hear you need to put a run together. You need to do this, that and the other, not just in the Europa League, but obviously for a whole season. Um, I'm at the point now where, you know, I, I wasn't really behind talk of getting top four because I didn't feel Arsenal could get it because we're not having got it there consistently. But I was willing to entertain, you know, mathematically other teams, this and that. They lost me against Burnley because... You know, I've been over it. I don't want to go over it again, but they lost me with that against Burnley. So all I'm hoping for now is building blocks for next season in a sense of you need to show me you can put a run of form together. You need to show me you can do what you need to do against Olympiacos and the context of that, play an informed West Ham team. And, and before that, obviously play Spurs who have taken points off you this season. You need to show me you can put a consistent run together, a, a, a long run and, and get out of these games and have something positive. You know, there's, let's just, in short, let's just try to finish as high as possible. So how I'm feeling to, for tonight it's as business as usual you're no idiot jack they know what they need to do you know what they need to do it's as simple as that win games win the game put the game to bed it's as simple as that and i hear arteta you know as much as i, f I blame the players a lot more because they're the ones playing and they should seize their own destinies of sorts you said that you got you, you lot have learned from the olympiacos game and all of these sort of chats show me in it 
up from a year ago. Because if I, you said that before Benfica, based on that 180 minutes or so of football, I don't know. So again, for those players as well, I'd say cast your minds back. Is it? Is ne nobody likes failure. Failure is necessary in in life, but you have to learn from it. If I was one of these players, honestly, I'm watching that game again because over those two legs, we messed up. It took a hundred and I mean, sorry. It took 81 minutes for us to get the first goal with Lacazette in that first leg. They were actually better than us on the night. We messed around in the second. You know, we can harp on about Aubameyang's great goal we scored or, uh, you know, Aubameyang's miss. We can talk about Pepe's decision-making that night. We can talk about Leno and them not making mistakes. And they're all factors. But collectively, not a single soul did enough over those 180 minutes. And there's no luxury of potentially getting to the FA Cup final in the Europa League. There's no luxury of obviously finishing in a European place right now, we're probably going to be punching. So it is what it is. How I feel tonight, it sounds cliche and we've I've definitely said it several times on this chat, on this live stream with you lot, several times. It's a cup final. Like, it's simple as that. Every game's a cup final and the whole squad needs to stand up to be counted because let's be real, you know, the whole, we're going to need to make rotations and all of those sort of things with the games coming thick and fast. And this Anderson, apologies, is saying, DG, I'm scared. I should not be scared of this El Arabi guy so much. Bro, you know, I hope the players are scared. Defenders, you know, you know what he was on last year. Fix up. It's as simple as that. And it's been, if we go based on Europe, you know, Juventus have gone out, Barcelona crumbled. You know, you could say there's been upsets. If that continues into the Europa League, I don't want Arsenal to be a part of that. So stand up and be counted. Big up the Twitch gang as well. You're never forgotten. Deluded Guna 187 for those of you that want to watch on Twitch. Those of you that actually don't want to get shagged by YouTube in terms of notifications, make sure you're subscribed on Twitch because the Twitch people, them only have good things to say. I hope you're doing well as well, Jack. Liam, who's a Liverpool fan, is saying 2-1 Olympiacos, then 2-1 in the second leg. Ah, you see what I'm saying? That's dead for me, though, man. That's dead. I mean, you scumbag it through, but nah, man. I want to see a convincing performance because, again, you put this game to bed within the first 60 minutes. I'm dreaming, but you go free. Dream world, you score two to four goals in that first leg away from home. Come 60th minute, you could take off Aubameyang. I'd assume Saka starting. I assume Part A or, 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 or Tierney and these guys. You could take them off going in regards to Sunday's game. Now, I'm sure you can make more subs even in Europe. So this is why I need to see game management because these players need to understand every game is a bit of a puzzle. The more you put this game to bed, the easier it can get in preparations for Sunday's game, you know, and then the return leg and then obviously West Ham. And I don't think these players think as cerebral as that, but it is what it is. There's 120 people locked in people. Where if seven, um, in, in the opening seven minutes, please make sure that says 127 likes. You know, the best things in life are free. You know, big up yourself, Jamal. Terrell is saying, my only concern with this Arsenal team is the concentration levels and discipline. After that, Arteta might have something. That's where I'm at as well, to a degree. But when I look at it, you know, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with, you know, these players, you know, they're, just, they're poor and all of these things that we've been speaking about. But when I look at Arteta as an individual, I do think he's done some good stuff, but I think there's concerning things. In short, as much as the players are poor and things like that, you know, coaching is a big part of this role whether they're good or not you know you needed to get a tune out of some players we thought were past it you know you have to work with some young players you know you have to do these things and can i answer the question of you know a tradesman is only as good as his tools but by that same token surely a tradesman is only as um good as how well he utilizes the tools he has available to them you know and has arteta answered all the questions I believe to the point where I could say you know what you bring him a centre midfielder obviously it would but you bring him a centre mid you bring him a better defender a right back a this that and the third and it's a, it's a straight trajectory I do still believe it can be that not just for Arteta but anyone at the helm but I'm not too sure you know I can't answer that question that's why I'm not necessarily Arteta in or out I'm just you know you, you it's, it's quite concerning but Moving, moving away from that, people, um, you know, big up everybody. I see the interactions. TB, like he's saying, there's 130 odd of you and there's 58 likes. Come on, people, turn that one around for the guy. It's 11.30 a.m. in the UK and there's bare other streams to go. Big up the opinionated Gooner as well. Lovely to see you lot out of the blocks early days, man. I appreciate all of you lot locked in. Big up the members, them. I see you. The Twitch gang is live. Teddy, who was here in the live stream for the Champions League, is there. I appreciate you lot, man. You know, this people, I'm letting a lot of you filter in. Um, I was going to say last question, but Liam's one's gone. Oh, here it is. He said, how would you feel about meeting an English team if you make it through? 
in the nicest way, my guy Liam. I don't care in it. You're at that. We're at that stage now where obviously you want to play the worst teams and things like that. And you know, I don't necessarily want to play an English team now because of the connotations with it. But for me personally. You know, the teams are only going to get worse and harder. So anybody really, whether it's an English team or whatever, I'm all for it. Personally, um, I, I wouldn't mind a new, Euro, um, a new English um, Europa League final against Spurs for bragging rights purposes. But I hope Dynamo Zagreb and they've got our former player, Robbie Burton, do a madness tonight. You know, I hope Milan do a thing against against um, Man United today. I think, are United playing today as well? Yeah, they should be, Um, you know, so... If it's not Arsenal, I don't really care. We're going to have to play every anyone if we get through. It is what it is, to be honest with you. Obviously, we've had an all-English final. We got our asses handed to us and, you know, hopefully we can put that right. I do agree with Josh, though. We must be clinical. Um, Stylish is saying, if Osman lose again to Olympiacos, then lose to Spurs, Osman might have to go into hiding, brother. <laughs> Let's not even get into that. A super chat before this, people. After this, I promise I'm going to get into the Arteta business, but I appreciate you, Steve. Apologies. What are you saying? Steve is saying, yo, DG, big fan from New Hampshire, USA. Big up the American ones, them. I appreciate all of you lot. Love for the $5.499. You've said, if you're a better man for tonight's game, what seems more likely? My pick is both teams to score plus an Arsenal win. I would go with that as well. I'd probably just probably go with both teams to score due because I don't know what Arsenal's on. I think both teams to score would be enough for me, but I do think that's realistic and things like that. Um, it is what it is. Jens, I don't necessarily agree with that. I agree with it. Big up Turkish, but I agree with it in principle. I'm not against it. But what are we going to say when, you know, where we, it's not going to be a Chelsea thing like with Conte and them man for us people. It's not going to it's not going to bang, is it? You know, what are we going to say when we're playing once a week and this, the problems are still happening? Because we played, we had no, we didn't play twice a week against Burnley. They did. Who played better? Do you see what I'm saying? And plus, as much as I, 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 I somewhat sympathise with that and agree with the logic, when I look at it, you know, not that I care about finances, not that I care about, you know, these unnecessary talking points in football. But if we are not in Europe, we can't talk about rebuilding and buying players and things like that if we're not in Europe because we're going to have less money. Now, don't get it twisted. Scouting, utilising the little resources you have, I'm with that. But we're going to have less money. You saw how important it was to get the F, to get into the FAU, FA Cup sorry, and win it. Um, and for me, you know, I said it before. Why were the board happy? Were they happy for Arteta that, yo, he's won, the, he's won a cup and it could be a little, you know, platform to build on? I'm sure. But were they happy with the money you get from the Europa League and stuff like that? So if we lose more money, while I believe we, even if we go out of Europe, you should be able to scout players from emerging markets or do whatever you can to get sensible players. There's footballers all, all over the world. And before they come world class or whatever, they have to have been found somewhere. You know, Mane was over there in Senegal and then France before he was doing what he's doing at Liverpool, you know. Lewandowski was in Poland, you know, Arsenal have done the scouting thing. We had Hileb and all of these sort of guys. It's been done. Um, so it still can be done, but we're going to have problems and then it's going to make it harder for ourselves. And as you lot know, we don't have any tangible assets like that at the club. The ones we do have, we don't want to sell. At a push, you're probably having to sell homegrown players to make up the market and a couple of players that have their contracts tied down. So I do think it, I do agree with the logic just purely from a footballing point of view, from Arteta, there's less games and things. But considering the whole club in general, I don't necessarily think it's going to help us, you know, considering we're losing more money. Like I said, I don't give a crap about money because it's nothing to do with me as a fan. But, you know, I care about my football club. So that's that. Love for that. I appreciate you lot, people. I keep saying I'm going to get into this Arteta business. I'm going to get into this Arteta business and I don't do it. So here it goes, people. Apologies. You know, we're making that one final timestamp or teta you know hit the like button people please make sure you're hitting the like button big up everybody locked in but let's actually let me actually swap the screen with you guys people and let's get into what our tetas had to say i'm sure you see the caption in the thumbnail i'm sure you see the title of this video you know big up the twitch gang that's actually not it that's what i was listening to this morning people shout out to poppy but that's not got any relevance to this people so apologies for you should you not see what song i'm listening to um it is what it is but moving away you look like you can see here people mikhail arteta arsenal boss says long-term projects going to go bang I can't ignore this guy, man. I love seeing C in the cup, man. Shout out to you. I appreciate that, man. Your DP, you know, you remind me, you, you remind me of my old driving instructor. You look like a man, cool guy, man. Who knows? You might be. I'm guessing. Big up yourself, C. But moving forward, people, as you lot know, Mikel um, Arteta propaganda. Shout out to Snowfall as well. But um, 
staying on task. Shout out to Mikel Arteta for the propaganda in this article. He did win an FA Cup in his first season in charge. Um, Arsenal boss Mikel Arteta says Gunners project will explode into life when everything clicks into place. Now, he never wrote this article himself. Obviously, the author of this and whatnot are sensationalising it to get clicks. But at the same time, my first thought is... It, it, this is the sort of thing Arsenal have been doing in that you're arousing the imagination of fans. We all know Arsenal Football Club and moving to the Emirates and where we have been and where we are now, it's not what we want. So when you hear this to go with people saying trust processes and be excited and all this fighting talk and it's not necessarily correlating, it's, it, it's not helpful. And I would say, again, you know, maybe as a football club, they need to do better in how they're coming across the message to fans because this is what gets people riled up and gets people carrying on. Um, as you lot know, sadly, we're currently 10th in the Premier League um, and all of these things. Europa League is our only chance of silverware. Um, Arteta has said, I think this project is going to go bang. This is where we are, but sometimes it's difficult to see the moment now, but I'm sure where we're going. Arteta, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm neither Arteta in or out. I want the best for this football club. I don't think I have seen enough to support you wholeheartedly and say, yo, you're the, you're the guy to the point where it's blind faith almost, similar to what I have with Wenger to a degree. Um, I haven't seen enough to just say, get out of my club and all of those sort of things. I'm, I see some concerning moments. What I would say is, I would have liked you to learn from mistakes quicker. I would like to have seen more of a balanced and fair sort of thing in terms of game management. I, would, I don't think I've been able to read your squad enough. I do think you've put too much faith in players that are not fit enough to wear the shirt. Um, and I do have some hope that you can get it back. I mean, let's be real. You can't see it. The FA Cup clouded stuff, people. It clouded stuff. And I do think for what it's worth, Arteta writes a lot of verbal checks as well. But it clouded a lot of things. But the same logic, you can say it clouded stuff. I think personally, um, it... it, it um, presented a false sense of security to fans and made them think that, yo, we've improved certain things and um, that, that that haven't been improved and we need to focus on other things when really it was a false image and whatnot. But at the same time, it was a bit of a moment to build upon. So I do, Arteta does have some concerns, but there's something there. What I will say is, you know, Arteta, like I've just explained, there's some cloudy stuff, people above you, I'm not too sure if they're cut up to task. The owner doesn't really strike me as a winner, to put it nicely. Um, so I'm not too sure if we do have the project to go bang because this is not a Sir Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger thing. One of these things where a single pillar is going to um, move this club along. Everyone needs to be on the same wavelength. And I don't necessarily get that. I think you do. I don't agree with everything you do from a footballing point, but I think you want to be a winner. I don't think certain other people, whether it's playing staff, people above you. So you can really talk as much as you want. It's not going to make much happen. He has went on to say we have created a really strong group, a really strong bond with our players, with our fans, with our staff, and that is going to pay big in the future. I hope it does, but I see bits and pieces, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, one step forward, two steps back, three steps forward, four steps back. So it's almost like you're moving, you know, we mistake pro movement for progress. There's, time, you know, there's not really a plan. We've had huge amounts of turnovers with players to a degree, definitely staff in recent years. And one consistency has been our inconsistency. So for me, you know, how much can you do? How much can you improve? Because there's no DNA really on the pitch. So how can you have a model? Of, if you ain't got a model off the pitch of the sort of players you want, so how can you have an identity on the pitch? How can you start winning? You know, these things help each other. If you have a philosophy, you identify players that can help us. On the field, we succeed and we get into the prem and we get into the, you know, the top four places and all of those sort of things and everything takes care of itself you know we have failed off the field with foresight with complacency with not pushing the boundaries so we suffered on it our poor play on the field has correlated with losses off it to the point where I am sitting here and saying we need to get Europe for some reason so we can get finances so I'm not too sure this it almost feels like a mighty ducks thing we're almost relying on a Leicester sort with all due respect to Leicester when they won the Premier League it's almost like if, if it's not going to be a that sort of thing for Arsenal then I can't see it because I don't really see the building blocks from everybody. And like I said, you know, when I look at the club, I should be able to look at the club, like not the manager, not a player, and know what it's about. I don't. I see some people who might want to win, other people who look shaky. But we have created a really strong group and all of those things. He said, if you're not inside the club every day and know exactly what's going on within the club, the only way to convince anybody is to win. That's it. And show building blocks. Like I said, for me, 
obviously a lot of fans are irrational, but I can only speak for myself, people. Rome wasn't, I always say this, Rome wasn't built in a day, but that plot of land that you're building, Rome, if Arteta was, was the builder, if I see some scaffolding going up, I see some labourers coming on things, you know, plumbers are doing this, and I see something, something's going on every day, I'm like, okay, cool. And I see a little bit of how, it, you know, laying down the plumbing work, for obvious reasons, eventually there's going to be bedrooms and things. So I don't really see enough, Day in, day in, game in, game out to say, okay, cool, there's light at the end of the tunnel, there's some framework. That's my biggest problem above above everything. And as much as I feel Arteta's inherited a mess, you know, owners and people above him need to pull it out. These players have failed several people now at this football club. You need to look at Arteta as well. And I think he is... is I don't feel there's enough pressure on him, despite the obvious. I think he's blurring the lines like what Wenger was doing towards the end of his tenure in that... I don't know if you're playing players for yourself or, for, or what's best for the football club because, yeah, when they score and get these assists, it looks decent. You know, again, you as a midfielder, again, the finances, but, you know, as much as I feel we messed around with Partey and allegedly you wanted our... Well, you put your faith in Xhaka. You rubbed out Torreira and Guendouzi. I know they're not faultless, but you rubbed them out. You put your faith in Xhaka. Now, Xhaka's done all right this season, but, you know, he's still shown why he's why he is him. My point is that when you look at Bellerin, Xhaka, William, these sort of players have not been cut up to task. Now, that hasn't helped Arteta, but you've put your faith in certain men and made them key parts of your team. Um and for me, I don't think Arteta learns from his mistakes fast enough. But, you know, the only way to convince me is to win, of course. And the only way to convince me is to show me there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's all football fans want at hope. Whatever football club you support or look at in the league, the, be the best thing is hope. You know, Leicester have given them people their hope. Right now, David Moyes is giving West Ham fans hope. Fulham turned it around, you know, completely different Fulham team since the one we played them. Scott, Scott Parker has hope. The only real teams where you look at, you know, I'd say, us oh, probably Newcastle now, Sheffield United, you know, they're the only fans that there. you look at them, there's no real hope, people. And as you look, know, not to make it about finances, um, you know, COVID has impacted our finances as well as obviously failing off the field. Um, as you lot know, a mixture of coronavirus and, and whatnot has, has implemented that. But apparently Arteta says he does not know whether those losses will impact on his ability to spend in the market this summer. Let's not be naive. Of course he does. So this is the thing. You know, we've had we've been dealing with this for, for a year now. Now, obviously, it's easier said than done. But you struggled last year for a variety of reasons. So whether you have to target, you know, your 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 you know, your third, fifth choice target instead of instead of going for your plan a this you know these hours and things do it you know i'm sorry but you got rid of a bunch of scouts well not you but people at this club ed you got rid of a bunch of scouts and wanted it to go through you so you should the minute like i said the minute the window closed in october you should have known what number six what number eight what number two what potential center half are going to come into this club in the next 18 months you need to know long term who is going to be the striker because abamian is not going to be here forever lacazette's future is in doubt as is the young eddie and ketty and lacazette we're not learning from hindsight and applying better foresight and this can't be done by Arteta alone. This is every single fragment of this football club. So again, you do 100% know that this is going to impact it and there's no excuses. You know, we've done a lot of turnover now. You know, we were very reactive because we didn't do what we needed to do in the summer. You know, we was very reactive. It looked great that we signed Partey, but we messed about with that. We've done a lot of madness in January. Again, we're not going to get everything done in the summer certain things need to be done or it's going to be more of the same. He said, we know the aim is always to be involved in the Champions League, but at the moment, things are looking difficult, but possible. You know, best way to put it. And obviously, the financial package that is attracted to it for the club at the moment is really important, which is true. And this probably gives you a lot, people. He says, we have people on loan, people finishing contracts. There is a lot going on the last two windows transfer windows the amount of things to be done was probably unprecedented and it will be again in the summer and that's it of course you know you've got Maitland Niles, Joel Willock, Wendozi, Torreira, these people what's happening with David Luiz again William is he, the, the, the heat's off him now because he's I won't say he's turned it around but he's been all right but you're gonna have to answer for that you know Odegaard, are you going to pay another? Are you going to make it five million in loan fees, paying an extra two point five to keep him? Who knows what's going to happen, people? And this is why you need a plan. This is where Arteta, deep down, he knows. I, I'd assume, I personally think Joel Willock will come back this season, or he'll be used, or he could be sold if he really pushes for it. I think Maitland Niles doesn't have a future here, based on what I'm seeing, and he wants to play midfield. I think he don't fancy Maitland Niles. He's, he's Torreira's heart's not in it. Guendouzi's made his bed, so he's lying in it. These players are going, you know, El Nene should be sold. He might be allowed to run down his deal for depth purposes, as is Lacazette. 
Xhaka probably should be moved on, but he won't be. And he'll probably sign a new deal based on, you know, the length of his contract. He's got two years left. So it is what it is. I actually think they'll let Laka run down this deal. I don't think they're going to sell him whether that's right or wrong. So it has to be. He said, so we are trying to put a plan together to see with the resources we have, how much we want to improve, how we're going to do it and at what cost. And that is just so many factors. I want a sustainable club. We all want a club that can be run with their own resources. To be run with your own resources, you need to maximise your own resources. Even the ones at this football club that are leaving. Look, in, look, in, look, look at someone like Balogun. You know, why are we in this mess? Very reactive. Last summer, you look at all these similar development peers, they all went out on loan. You should have tied man down or you should have sold man in the summer. Yeah, eight million or whatever might have been too cheap, but that's better than for free. You know, it's not making sense. It's not making sense. You know, these things can pay for yourself. Of course, Balogun might turn around and become a 50 million pound player one day. I hope he does. And you could, 8 million looks like chump, but that 8 million might allow you to put extra peas on top of something. You know, Eddie and Ketty or these sort, you know, what are you doing with him? Again, you look at the amount of young players that have left this football club, you know, and a lot of it's nothing to do with Arteta, but we've let players go for pennies. I'm I'm questioning the process. One man in Arteta cannot change years of mismanagement. How many times? Look, think about a workplace, people. Uh, how many times have you seen a new manager come into a workplace? I'm sure you've all seen it. He's either too strict or whatever, and he's trying to change the whole culture, and he's done it in a mad militant way or or whatever. It hasn't banged. One man can't change it. Other people need to buy in. I'm all for self-learning and self-discovery. The penny needs to drop for everybody at this football club and it won't change until, you know, there's healthy pressure from the man above. You know, I wouldn't even care if Kronke weren't at the stadium or didn't necessarily care about football. Just as long as when you turn up, you're on this Roman Abramovich thinking, OK, this is needs this needs to be done. I need this. I need that and the other. Instead, he's a foreign manager that does, he, he he's he's a, he's a foreign manager away from for, foreign owner. Sorry, he doesn't really care about the game right now within within Arsenal. You know, you get a lot of foreign owners who do care. Sadly, we've got one who doesn't and just sees it. Saw it at the time of, as football in Europe was getting bigger and bigger and saw an opportunity to be made. And he's a great businessman in that regard. Sadly, it's unfortunate he owns my football club. Um. So he's went on to tell us the obvious as well. He said, we've had that in the summer when it was much needed because of everything that has happened with COVID and what happened at the club in the last three years without the Champions League and that hit that it took. But our responsibility and everything we are planning for for the future is for this club to go back to being sustainable on its own and being all the time as strong as possible in every department and the financial department is crucial as well. I'm not too sure if he said the same things here, but apparently, you know, it probably is the same thing. Apparently, Arteta is expecting Arsenal to explode into life despite a difficult season. I'm going to scroll and see if it's the same thing, people. It probably is. Yeah, it is the same thing, people. So, yeah, it is what it is. He wants to make us sustainable and things. And we are making a loss. There's nothing wrong with being sustainable. You just need to do things in the right way. Um, so, yeah, moving away from that, you know, former owner, former youth worker, Steve Morrow, Former player, for those of you old enough, has had something to say about Arsenal. He aired my, my letter, mate, so I don't care that you left this club. But, um, yeah, we're going to get into that in a second, people. Please let me know your opinions on that article, your opinions on this in general. So, yeah, that's the timestamp. <laughs> JV's killing me. Boy, trust me. Good point, my guy. Explode or implode. I'd say the latter right now. PR, this is it, man. This is it. It's crazy, man. And this is it. To be fair with you, I do agree, Mr. Analytical. But for those of you that aren't can't see, said there isn't much Arteta can get out of these players as as the players they play. Sorry, as the players they play how Arteta wants them to play in one half. They don't do it again for a couple of games. I agree with that. They've got bad habits, but at the same time, he took over them. You know, nobody put a gun to his head and become Arsenal manager. As much as I agree with those sort of sympathy sort of things I have for Arteta, the same token of that is, you knew what you was walking into, leaving City and coming to Arsenal. You knew the dynamics at play. Cle clearly, there's been probably madder stuff happening that you didn't, but sympathy can only extend. And reality, whatever we say about these players... Are they necessary? I think it, it, they are, but are they necessarily worse than some of the players, the teams above them? You can't, you can't absolve any, you can't absolve him of every of everything. In my humble opinion, 
Big up yourself, my guy. There was a super chat. I, I was aware of it and I've come time to come back to it. I appreciate you, Steve. Steve says, non-Arsenal related. My apologies. But any Europa League predictions, games slash games you're looking forward to today? Um, obviously, you know, obviously after our game, it's Man United versus AC Milan. It's a shame that I believe Zlatan Ibrahimovic won't be a part of that. So obviously probably that game. Rangers after winning the league, I'm keen to see what they can do. And, you know, Rangers in the Europa League seem so far this year as an outsider looking in. I'm sure it seems like all their games are thrillers, bare goals, bare drama and rest of it. So I would say for me, AC Milan versus United for obvious reasons. And, and then obviously the Rangers. So you're right in that regards. Um, I hope Dynamo Zagreb can do a thing against Spurs. Of course, our former guy, Robbie Burton, should be there. Hopefully, Burton can do what Mar uh, Marcus Edwards did when we played Victoria and, you know, strike a former North London rival. Um, so mad it's madness, you know, and it shows how t how far both teams have fallen off with Man United, AC Milan. Like, when you said that fixture to me, or when I read that, the first thing I was getting in my head is Kaka making um, Gabriel Heinz and, and Rio Ferdinand dance, or bump heads better yet. Love for the super chat, though, man. What else are you guys saying, people? I appreciate it. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. Please make sure you're aware of the watch along later, people. Open up another tab and let's do that, man. Jordan, I also agree. This is where fans don't take expectations. Now, for me, I wasn't too gassed on the FA Cup beyond the fact of I'm happy we've won and I wanted it to be a blueprint. And this is why I, my criticism of Arteta, I hold him accountable for what I can, but it can only extend so far because for me, if I'm a footballer and Arteta's taken over and we've won an FA Cup, you know, and forget the FA Cup to a degree, the run, you know, beating these teams and doing what we're doing, you know, this would give me a first for more. I think, raw. like, I've been a part of bare failure. I've been a part of a bit of success here. We've been underdogs. You know, we've worked week in, week out. We've had self-belief. We've had all of these things and got something. So I'll be like, raw. imagine how it feels to apply all of this across a 38-game period and get top four and do this and do that. You know, that's what would drive me in the same way, being a part of failure, being a part of that Emre team, which some of you have where you bottled it, where you finished fifth and you got smacked up in the Europa League. Some of you were here under Wenger. You know, some of you game in, game out. You know, you, you see it in the papers. You see it on Match of the Day. I'm talking about it on YouTube and a bunch of other people. You lot are commenting and the rest. You don't want to be a part of failure. Like this should that the fear of failure should thrive you and hurt um, and 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 the and how it felt should should push you and that sort of first for in, for, for winning stuff. And for me, Arteta can only tell these men some so many things. You know how many of you have got friends that you know or, or or whoever in life that you love them to bits or you you believe in them, but you've tried to tell them certain things or or trying to help them and they don't learn the lessons. No matter how much you tell them certain things, you the penny has to drop alone, and I think the penny won't drop because again. Arsenal Football Club, we're still talking about the same seven man. I'm not scapegoating. We might talk about, yeah, Xhaka looked good this game, Bellerin this, William that, this, that and the other. They're just names. But really, who can we really believe in? And for me, I think fans, you need not that they can, but they need to let go of this perception of how Arsenal used to be and accept right now we're a mid-table team. Now, that being said, do not accept mediocrity. Do not accept a lack of consistency, cheap mistakes and all of these things. Because like I said, at building blocks, I just want to see day in, day out, game in, game out, we're getting better. We're try we're not where we want to be, but I'm seeing you try to get there. And I don't see that. I don't see a team that wants to get better every day and wants to be that Arsenal team that wants to be back. I see the same seven man. Saka, bro, was Saka even alive when, when we won? You know, I don't even know the maths and he's not that much younger than me, but was Saka even alive when we won the Invincibles? He screamed someone that wants to be possibly one day chasing the inv Invincible of being mentioned in that, you know, Tierney, big up to Tierney for the Celtic, you know, and big up Celtic for the mentality. Been here for two seconds. You know, Aubameyang, say what you want. He's been a good signing. Leno, I'm not really the biggest fan, but I'm not the biggest critic. He's on this. Gabriel, I still think he's on this. He's young and naive, but he's on this. There's only about seven men. Martinelli, the same. You know, there's seven men. You need a 25-man squad that are all on this, that all wake, wake up, man. You know, he's in nappies. And he gets it more than certain men that are old enough to know what Vieira was like and them things there. Like, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy, man. Benefited from it a lot, I believe. But it is what it is, man. 
Come on, people, man. There's over 300 people. Can we get that to 300 likes? What's the like tally on now? The like tally is on 124. Not the worst, not the best. Come on, people, man. There's over, you know, there's bare of you. I'm, a, I'm poor at maths, but there's bare of you that are not doing that. So please hit the like button. Do what you can to drive up the engagements, man. Um, It is what it is. You know, Smith Rowe is on stuff. They're the only one, you know, for me, Smith Rowe as well. You know, I forgot about him. You know, obviously, he's really just been involved in the first team at this higher level for two sex. But, you know, the Halem players, I've got time for them. I love Lacazette to bits. I love Pepe. You know, when I say those same seven, it don't mean that they're the only seven I think can be of use. You know, I like Pepe's turn a corner, but... 38-game period, I'm not willing to bet my life on you. Like I said, I can't really bet my life on you. You go through good or bad moments. Right now, you're on fire. You you, you get it. There's a couple play I like Odegaard, but I ain't seen enough. I like Ceballos, but I ain't seen enough, you know. If you want to, you know, I don't see you looking like Real Madrid players right now. I see players that are good technically, but I understand why you've been allowed to go out on loan. In the same way, it's irrelevant, but watching West Brom, not that Maitland Niles is playing poorly, but I understand why you might not have got a chance in midfield ahead of, ahead of Joe Willett now, whether I believe it or not, just because of what my eyes are telling me, you know. Couple man gay, and look at what you said, my guy, you know, Smith Rowe's been in, you know, he's been in and around the first team, but a real option starting week in, week out. He's been here for two sex. Saka's two sex. Martinelli, two sex. Tierney at the football club, two sex. Partey and Gabriel, two seconds. You know, Leno, uh, some men have been here longer than Leno and I'm looking at him as someone who gets it more, you know. It's quite jarring in that in that sense, people. Did you get it? You know, and even if, I think it's re even reflected in that William's been pretty poor. Suddenly he's, he's, he's got a couple of assists somehow and he leads kind of them, he, him, obviously Smith Rowe, they lead the charts for us. So this tells me that you've had William who's been messing about all, all season. Smith Rowe that weren't about until like two weeks ago, really, you know, obviously figure of speech. This tells me that a lot of you are coasting and what I think has been hap happening a lot of people, a lot of players just are looking at it now and like, yeah, Saka will get us out of this. Tini will get us out of this. You know, it's the same players, even to the point where Saka, Saka, you know, Saka's got a lot to improve and, you know, and stuff like that. But Saka, on Saka's worst of days, he's playing than some time, he's playing way better and affecting the game way better than some man where we're saying, yo, we play quite well. That tells it all. Now, if I was one of these footballers at this club, I would be ashamed of myself if a 19 year old, you know, if Saka, Smith, Rowe, Tini has been here two sex and Gabriel fans were saying that and they weren't mentioning me, I'd be ashamed because this tells me that I've been coasting. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Bro, Tini can't do it alone. No one can do it or get it out of us alone. Boy, to be fair, older, older guy don't strike me as someone that will take man's lunch, but I like it, man. Hey, shout out to my guy H, man. We're going to get into that. Shout out to Big H, man. He deserves to sign that new deal. Been working very hard. You know, down to him to keep working, but he can do his thing, man. To be honest, you can do them. Um, obviously, 50 million doesn't go far, but this is where I look at it. If you do have 50 million, then you can't do a lot with it. And it's easier said than done, but you should be able to find a centre mid or right back and do what you can, you know, adapt to your situations. We've been out of Europe for a long time now, so we should be able to adapt to this. And for me, crucially, if I'm a football club and I know the minute the other English rivals or whatever clock onto a player I want, if it gets into a bidding war, I can't do it. This, for me, should scream more reason why there should be a plan, why there should be more proactiveness. But it's crazy, man. Big up, Steve, man. Steve, I appreciate all the super chats. You said, how much credit in the bank would Arteta earn if he delivers the Europa League title? What's your starting 11 predicted for tonight? Um... To, for tonight, you put me on the spot. Uh, Leno, for me, I'll go Leno in goal. I, don't, I, I wouldn't mind David Luiz and Marie starting, but I'm a big fan of Gabriel. I'll go Gabriel and David Luiz. You know, Gabriel and, and, and Marie aren't going to play together. So I would say a defensive pivot or defensive partnership, better yet, assuming Marie is fit of, of with Marie and David Luiz slash Gabriel and David Luiz. Let me just go Gabriel, Luiz, Leno, obviously in goal. Tini left back. Right backs, you know, shout out to Chambers. He had a good game and that, but I feel if, Ch if Cedric is fit for me, Cedric does it. Sent him, well, the three in midfield, you know, in the 10. And if Smith, I'm not too sure Smith Rowe is fit enough. I know he'd be on the bench, but it might be punching. Um, I'd probably try, I told you, I'll try something different. I wouldn't mind Odegaard being there, but I just haven't been impressed in the last couple of starts he's been given now. So I'd try something random, man. Lacazette in the 10, Abamian up front. 
Saka and Pepe on either flanks for me personally. And to be fair with you, Les, if he delivered the Europa League, he would get credit in the bank. I think he's got credit in the bank anyways, because unless something dramatic... we got to remember... Not to make this about Emre, but cast your mind back, people. Do you remember when Emre, when, when you know, the same things we're kind of saying now. Do you remember when we was all thinking about this and it, the, the tide was starting to turn against Emre and saying he needs to be moved on and, and all of these sort of things? And do you remember before they actually sacked him, they were going to give him a new deal? So my point is, what us, what's, what us as fans think or our sentiment to what the people them in the club think could be two different things. And when you look at it, I look at it like this, you know, they're never going to bring... Allegri, because we don't have an owner who's on winning, these, you know, like, whether you want them or not, these Contes, these Allegris, these, you know, uh, these sort of managers, you know, Carlo Ancelotti, they, it's a myth to get them because they're going to... They would probably listen when Arsenal phone, but when it comes down to, OK, cool... I don't rate this, this and this guy. I want this, this and that. They're not doing it. You know, Arsenal not doing that. Arteta can obviously command things and he must have got some assurances because he rejected the job initially a year before he's taking it, more or less. Um, but it just screams to me as cool because he ain't really done nothing in the game at the time of taking the job. You know, he's cheaper. You know, he's he's young, so we can keep him up for... We can keep him here for a while together with Edu. He's kind of young in his role. You know, he's just going to be here for the long term. So I think he's got credit in the bank anyways in that, you know... He's get he's he's been promoted in title. He's a, he's the manager now. He's got the most control over a squad since Arsene Wenger. Let's be real, you know. And he's arguably had the least, you know, experience really and truly. So I think he's here for a while. I think this time next season is probably the only season he's probably going to be really judged, bro. Um, really judged because again, you know, for, come on, he took over mid season. That wasn't really one. This season is his first year and all of that jazz. But as much as I criticize the player, there's been. A couple of times Arteta has himself, that's, I'd say, stood out in the rain and complained he's wet. I mean, he's getting wet and he's got no umbrella. Personally, that's what I feel. Um, so, yeah, man, I think I, I think this season you still get to hide behind. Oh, look at all the business we've done in January. Covid didn't let us bring people in. We never had a real pre-season. All of these things, he'll get to hide behind that. Um, so I think next season he'll really be judged. But if he wins the Europa League, he deserves another season or so. You know, he probably could get a new deal, really, because what <laughs> two trophies in two seasons with first manager Paul Sarsen Wenger to get you back into Europe. You know, to a degree you could say it's a false image, but who cares? I would love to scumbag it. And on one on one hand, football's a, a results driven game, so he probably he would deservedly so be given credit. So it should be. I don't want to say he's finished because this time a year ago, people writ off kiddo um, Taylor Hart. But um, I'm not going to lie, man. Watching him at 23's level, it does feel like he's going through the motions. I just think he's in a, going through a bad spell at this moment in time. I just think he needs a bit of confidence, really and truly. I would like to see him involved, but I do think he'll either be sold permanently or go out on loan. Um, so it is what it is, man. It is, man. Is where it is. Lord Bentner said, Will we not just get knocked out in the group stage if we get chance? To be fair, you got legit point there, my guy, but we gotta be you gotta be in the club to, to have that debate in it. So let's just get back in the club. We do need Smith Row 100 percent But if the man's not fit, fully fit, it's a myth, man. Facts, bro. <sighs> I don't know, man. I'm not convinced with both. And Xhaka's made two mistakes in two Premier League games. El Nene's had that had a, had good and bad this season. My actual bias is actually Partey and Sabios, but I'd probably just go Xhaka and El Xhaka and Partey. Apologies, that'd probably be it. That's how fans are, Thomas. Man, they get excited, man. You know, they're going to turn on Saka one day. You know, Saka's the best thing since sliced bread. You know, that's the energy is going to change. It happens to every footballer, every young player. It's happened at every club. And I always tell you a lot about the honeymoon honeymoon period. Those of you that follow my content on a consistent basis know exactly what I'm referring to. We'll bring in better players if we qualify for the Champions League. Well, you, you know, you're going to have to bring in better players. You know, I, I agree with that, but you're going to have to bring in better players to help you. You know, it's about stages because these players that you've got can't help. My bias is to that because I think that's the midfield pivot of of that complements each other the best personally. And I think it's the most dynamic. But I think Xhaka and Partey generally do work well together to a degree. And I think that's where Arteta will carry on with. There is no patience in the modern game at all. But I would say for someone like me, I'm pretty patient, but I need to see things to be patient for. Um, 
I'm not that's why I said I'm just on the fence, really and truly. Um, yeah, man, peace have saying he needs to play party and Sabios. Jordan has said people need to realize that whatever happens, this club won't sack our title, they will give him next season either way. No, I think that's legit. Thomas from Norway said, I'm not convinced by Sabaos at all. Am I cray-cray? I wouldn't say you're crazy because I'm not either. And what I mean by that is I'm convinced he's a good player. You know, I'm convinced he's a great technical footballer. I'm convinced on all of that, but I, I haven't seen enough. Like, I haven't seen enough, you know, technical level. That's why you've been bought by Madrid, you know. So come out and show it. And I, for me, if you're coming from Real Madrid, wherever Real Madrid is, you know, if you're coming from Real Madrid on loan anywhere, you should be the first name on the team sheet, you know. You should be doing what Saka, and in your own way, what Saka and these sort of guys, the guys that we say get it at this football club doing. And I don't see that um, really and truly. I don't, I don't, I don't see that. He does provide more options. And for what I like about Sabayos, he is a bit crazy on the ball like Jacques, in fact, like all of them. But Sabayos, for me, I like that he wants the ball under a lot of, a lot of, a lot of um, pressure. I think he wants to try and play those passes. I prefer him to Xhaka in a sense of, he takes extra touches, but he it's at least it's not slow with him, sort of thing. But let's I'm I'm gonna be real with everybody. If it's not really Partey in the midfield, I'm not really convinced on any of the partners we can throw to him. I'll be completely honest, people. I didn't say it, but based on how we've been playing in the last couple of games, people, um I've 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 been like, where's Joe Willock? I, I, what was our last game? I was like, where's Joe? Joe Willock should be in the midfield, and this is a madness. Um, no, nah, he don't, because you saw Xhaka doing it himself. You know, the only person that could hide his weakness is himself. Passion isn't a problem for Sabios. You know, I didn't say it was, but it's a myth. I just think he's. It's, I just think it's not that he plays within himself, or he's not. He, he's not playing well. He's just not standing out. Like you're not, and it, we shouldn't be there. We shouldn't be in that man. The season's over for us. Fair play. I don't think it is in a sense of. You know, you try and finish as high as you can. It is what it is. Jaden has said we need to start. Kill, we need to start Eddie and Ketia. You're on Bant. Yo, yo, is saying what I'm saying. Sabas needs to play with less touches. He does, man. He needs to play with less touches and just play to a greater consistency. Like the penny needs to drop. You know, you need. I'm sorry, but you've seen firsthand Modric and all them man there at Madrid. You should know what a midfielder is, man. Great point from S. I think this as well, and I've been saying that. You know, that's one thing that has surprised me with Ceballos. He's more on winning the ball and on the scrappers a bit more than I thought. Um, Carl, I would be up for the partnership of Marie and Gabriel, but I just feel every time we get to, you know, where, you know, Marie's had his injuries and Gabriel's been missing for a variety of reasons. But whenever we get to a, a, a point where we can actually contemplate it, I don't think he'll test it out in the in the games we have because to, people will say, can it do any worse than some of the uh, mid-defensive partnerships, sorry, we've seen, which is true. But at the same time, is he going to go with two left-footers? They ain't played together, to be fair, probably not. Teddy is saying, unpopular opinion. I think Williams should start tonight again. Um, I would love to hear your reasons. Personally, I don't because I believe Saka and Pepe, whether one's playing on the left and right, they are best. They providing our best options. They are playing as our best wingers right now. I think the pennies dropped for Pepe in that he's involved in all actions of the game. Saka, for obvious reasons, he speaks for himself. So it's that for me. I was saying Lacazette in the ten, but you know I wouldn't mind Odegaard or Smith Rowe. I I believe the wingers just need to be Saka and 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 Pepe. Really, I'd love to hear your reasons. Um, to be fair, Williams got a couple of assists in recent games, but nah, man, I'm not really on that. And like my man saying, it's that man. Peter, that's what I don't get. I always say that. Nobody talks about two right-footed centre-halves. So it is what it is, man. What else have I got on, on here, people? So we've spoken about Arteta. We've spoken about Arteta. A couple of other things to go to go through, people. One second with you guys. What's going on here? Apologies, people. I'm going to go over that moral stuff. Right. Bro, realistically, we're going to see William start. William Bellerin, we know what's going to happen. And as, if they win, it, it means what it means. It is what it is. Laka will work in the 10. He's worked in the 10 before, but fair play. I'd rather him than certain man. But moving away from that, though, people, if I share my screen with you guys in a second... 
you know, the Arsenal Oracle, which is Charles Watts, has an interview in which, you know, you can see it here. I do worry for the club. Morrow on leaving Arsenal, Wenger's advice and Saka's success. Now, you rejected my letter, so I'm quite happy that you've left really and truly. You're a bit smug, prick. But anyways, um, the former head of youth recruitment talks uh, talks to go about his exit in 2019. You know, he does quite the talk and he's probably upset. As you don't know, he left in terms of restructuring. He was pretty overrated in his role. But he said... That's a role and a project that I'm very much equipped for. Raul and myself sat down and had some football conversations around the structure of the club and the technical director role. He said I was an internal candidate, but then they went in a different direction. And maybe that was due to who was in place as the head coach at the time, Una Emre. Things don't work out for a reason sometimes. But I think when I got to that point and that didn't happen, there wasn't really another direction for me to go in. So that was part of my decision making and part of the reason why I felt it was the right time to move on. So he's doing what he can to make it sound like it, he wasn't clipped. I decided to leave. I could have stayed in some capacity. Um, apparently he's proud of the work. Apparently he's also concerned by the new direction the club is taking. I, 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 I agree with that. You know, Edu's disbanded it and made himself central to it. And again, you don't necessarily have the contacts based on what I've seen or the red or, 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 or the know-how to find these players of tomorrow. A lot of people praise Edu for Martinelli, but then we hear it scouts. Scouts you've got rid of. <laughs> Less said on that, the better, man. So I do share. It. He says, it does worry me when you have such an attachment to a club because you spent so long there. You want it to continue to do well. But I definitely do worry for the club now because the amount of change and transition it's had to go through for it to continue to be successful and to have success that it did a number of years ago is going to be a tough challenge. It's down to the people there now and the leadership that is currently there to steer the club in the right direction. And I very much hope it can do that. They definitely face some challenging times and sitting in mid-table now is not where Arsenal Football Club belongs. I'm sure they have ambitions to break back into the top four soon, but it's going to be a big challenge to do that. Facts, he said, there was a sadness when I left the club. I was lucky to be at the same club for so long, working on the leadership that had similar values. I knew where I stood, exactly where I stood and what my place in the club was and the responsibilities I had. Inevitably, when new owners come in and things change, people are going to have their own ideas. I very much want the club to continue with the same strong values it has and the reputation it has. But new people and new leaders will have their own ideas. That's not me saying that's a bad thing. It's just different. But that all... Sorry, but that all kind of led to me wanting to take on a new challenge and realising my future. Yeah. So shout out to him for all of that. Shout out to him. He, he, this is a bit nostalgia, nostalgialistic, obviously. I'm not going to bore you lot with it. Um, Kind of just want to get to the Saka part, if there is anything about Pakayo Saka. Pretty sure he mentioned Saka. Ah, here we go. He said, I'm very proud of what we achieved. I was able to build up a great team of scouts over the number of years, and I'm very proud of how we left things. You see the likes of Bakayo, Emil, Reese, Eddie, Joe, and Ainsley playing for the first team now, and even Martinelli, who came at the end. There's, there's a really strong group of players there, and also others have gone on to do very well at other clubs. As you lot know, recruitment policies. Sadly, we didn't really see... Well, I would have loved Martinez to stay. We didn't see the fruits of the labour with Gnabry or Daniel Marlin, who, you know, have gone on to play for, been become recognised respectively in their own nations and play for their national team. You know, Saka was once at Watford as well. So shout out to Watford for him. Um, it's the result of years of hard work from a great team of people. I'm very, I'm, I'm very proud of all the work we did. And that's, and that the likes of Emil and Bakayo are helping to drive the team forward at the moment. Pardon me. So yeah, shout out to him. It is what it is, people. So yeah, there's just the same old say, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you lot with that. It is what it is. You know, he's had some interesting offers, I'm sure he has, but that's where it's gonna end in relation to Mr. Morrow. So that's what he had to say. I mean, you know, goal.com sure did clickbait that one, didn't it? They sure made that sound like it was it was worse than it actually was, but it is what it is in that regard. Apparently, people, if we look at this, apparently Arsenal go for Ihatarin. I'm all for that. Now, this was courtesy of Google Translate, people. but um, And it doesn't look like there's any substance to it. But apparently, Arsenal want to resign young values where they can cement their future. Now, Google Translate has done the article badly. I guess they mean young players with potential. The, Gunners team, the Gunner team have been away from top positions 
for several seasons and from sports management they know they'll have to do a great job in offices to reverse the situation there are many names that are ringing to arrive in london next summer and the latest to join is mohammed ihataran the dutchman is one of is one of the players with the most projection most projection of orange so I think they mean going through to Holland's full national team. And his name has already been sounded to make the leap to a great last summer. Currently, the relationship between the club and the player is not the best, even being isolated at some stage this season. PSV have already placed a transfer poster and from London, they do not want to miss the opportunity to close this. Arsenal have had talks with have had several talks with the Dutch club and everything indicates they'll present an offer in the coming weeks. I'm all for that. I would love him to join. But clearly, you saw from that there's probably some contractual disagreements with such but that's where that one ends people so it is what it is boy hey, he's probably gonna cause some problems i i rate odegaard that's why i'm looking at him funny you know i want to see a bit better i know you're a good technical player but i want to see you stand out well see what's saying big up everyone please make sure you're hitting the like button we do need party man it very, it very much is a cup final for us today, broski. Very much a cup final today. Let's hope we can. Let's hope we can get. Let's hope we can get something out of it, man. Spurs, United, Villa, Real. Who would you like to? Who would you like to avoid the most in Europa League? Spurs for me now with Jose. Nobody, you know. I'm, I'm of the point where I don't really care now. You know, you're gonna have to buck one of these teams. Just do it now, innit? Forget it. I believe that as well. Nobody, be nobody believes in being tenth. You know, based on you know, based on the fact that Odegaard's a great technical footballer, my guy, of course. But based on what I'm seeing, I don't think so. Especially at a time where there's no money. Like if they're, let's just say, we could grab our and whatever fee that we'd have to pay on for Odegaard could be used, utilized towards getting an hour, then I would probably look to bring in Odegaard on loan again. Based on what I'm seeing with my own eyes, I don't think it's enough. I would bring him in by default because we've got no one else and he's a good footballer. But based on what he's done in an Arsenal shirt, leave it, man. I like Akinola. Probably won't get an opportunity. He's all right, though. We really will tonight, bro. We really will. We really will tonight get to see. Is it going to be lip service or is it actually going to be something? Who knows? Please make sure, please make sure you're there um, for the watch along people. As I said, live from 720, make sure you're all there, people. Um, how many likes are we on now? Hopefully we're at 200. 189 people, please keep doing that one up. 189, come let's, 190 now. Can we get that? to thingy please 200 we're so close come on like jay said hits the like button jordan i agree man i'd play Saka on the left pepe on the right i'd want them to swap in the game you know they just need to do that you know we just need to you know we just need to play our best wingers man when d has been doing a madness in the championship i'll, I'll be real with you I appreciate your, your support, man. By the way, love your content. Been watching you since 2018. May God bless you on your future. I appreciate that, my guy. Means a lot. We'll take the lock. Score prediction. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to say 3-1 Arsenal, but who knows, man? Who knows? We need to kill the game. You're right, man. The game needs to be killed. Can we go 2 or 3 up? Hopefully, I would love to see that. Kill the game off early. Come the 60th minute mark, look to rest the legs of the Sackers, the Tienies, the Abamians, the Partes, etc. As we go into the Spurs game on Sunday, people. That's what I'd like to say, man. Epic TV say, I'm going to put my neck out and we'll win 3-0 tonight. I hope you're right, man. I admire the, the braveness and the boldness, man. John Hamilton has said, watching DG on your lunch break, nothing beats that. I appreciate that, my dude. Um... Is there any other Arsenal talking points or anything related to Arsenal at this moment in time? Oh, here we let's see what's here, people. I don't know if this is legit. This could be clickbait as well. But here we go. Apparently, Ajax are making Ajax are already making plans for Mark Overmars' exit as Arsenal plan to make appointment. He's been linked 
we've been linked with him on several occasions. I don't think it will happen because he'll be another chef in the in the kitchen. You know, you've got Edu who's, you know, clipped all the, you know, you don't you don't come in, clip all of these scouting networks and things for then Overmars to come in and potentially say that was the wrong thing to do. And for Overmars, you know, I would have a bit of, you know, I'd have a, I can see how it could work. I can see how it could be annoying. I would like him to come, but I can see how there's a conflict because, Overmars is significantly more experienced than Edu in this role. He's a former Arsenal man as well. And, he, you know, he's very strong and opinionated, like what we hear about Edu. So they're going to have a clash of personalities, perspectively. Now, I'd rather side with Overmars based on the fact of, I do believe in these positions, you need experience. And, you know, the man was trying his best to get you to buy Hakim Ziyech and you lot said no. But for apparently, people, again, this is probably just... Football London sensationalizing things so they get clicks. We've given them one. Um, Ajax are set to hire Jeremy Hamster as a right hand man for Mark Overmars, which could provide the option for the former Arsenal winger to move on to move to North London as he's been previously linked. Okay, as you lot know, he was initially a coach and he progressed to becoming director of football earlier this season. It was promote. it was, um, it was reported he could leave. Apparently, he's decided to leave the club in June because he has finished his cycle. While no agreement has been, has reportedly been, sorry, while no agreement has reportedly been made between Overmars, Ajax and any potential new club he could move to, there are inevitable links with Arsenal. In 2019, Football London exclusively revealed that Overmars wanted the technical director role at the Emirates before eventually being overlooked in favour of Edu. And again, that's probably because he's probably less of a yes man and things like that. And again, I could see how Overmars, you'd become disillusioned. He could come here with his CV of what he's did at Ajax and, and scouting players. But when he's, you know, identifying players, which I think does happen to Arsenal, when he's identifying players and saying who to go for, they're saying, nah, forget it, do this and that. And then you've got the fans probably going to start blaming him. You know, it's, it's it's annoying. You know, them sort of things there would be great if you had Stan Kroenke wanted to be a winner. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. So that one there is just was people. It doesn't seem to be anything of any significance. Please make sure you're hitting the like button, people. Again, we've spoken about Arteta's comments. Again, we know we're in Europa League action. You know, I think a lot's being unnecessarily made of lack of of this whole Lacazette and Ian Wright thing. I do think, on one hand, uh, lack, um, Ian Wright, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Come on, Uncle, you're better than that. Like, come on, man. They got you. I know you got a good contract with BBC, anyways. You don't need to be dancing like that for them and the tap dancing thing. You don't need to be doing that, Ian Wright, at all. Um, but I do think a lot is being made of like a lot of unnecessary heat is being thrown Ian Wright's way. He doesn't deserve it. It wasn't nice, and he is an Arsenal man, but. You know, it's not that deep, really. I do think it was jarring because, again, where, who was it that screamed? I swear when we played Burnley at the at the Emirates, or get, there was a game when a player got tackled and they screamed, nothing was said. But it's only Arsenal that get tackled and, 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 and make a meal of it. It's crazy. And so, you know, and, and there's a conspiracy against Arsenal because, you know, us, Fulham and yesterday Man City, three games, crazy penalty shouts not given. Crazy penalty shouts not given. How Foden did not get a penalty yesterday, I don't have a clue, but it is what it is. Doesn't seem like there's anything at all, people. Wow, what's this here, people? Wasn't planning on this, but apparently Arsenal only shines in new position. Right, he's out there playing midfield. Put into kicker, you know, Arsenal only seems to set, seem set for a new role at, at, Sha at Schalke with head coach Demetrius Gamis hinting at a switch to a defensive midfield position. The Bosnian international had showcased some, some of the versatility during his final few months at the Emirates. True, he did. Never in the midfield. He played in the number six. Crazy people. <laughs> Aye. But to be fair, Schalke are in a mess, so you've got to try things. But apparently, Siad is a player who comes with force and embodies it. I suspect he loses some of his energy when he plays on the wing. Against Mines, his influence on our game in the centre was greater, especially since he had to fight for many second balls that came down. He has all the pre prerequisites to play there. Apparently, he's open to the idea of staying at Schalke next season, even if they're relegated. Apparently, he's, he's open to taking a pay cut. Shout out to him, you know. Apparently, he's only getting 70, 30k a week. Um, and obviously, he was on 100 at Arsenal. Complete mismanagement of wages. Another example of how free transfers can prove expensive because he came with a lot of hype, Bundesliga, fullback of the season and all those sort of things. Had good moments, but it just went worse and worse and worse and worse. What is this, people? Never seen this guy in my life. But apparently, Arsenal reportedly keen on Danish wonder kid Zidane Sir Demir 
but will have uh, have to compete with a host of German clubs for his signature. As you lot can see here, let's see. He's one of the hottest prospects in Danish football, having made a big impression for Neuseland's under-19 under side. The 16-year-old stepped up from the club's youth team at the start of this season and has been attracting admiring glances from Europe's top clubs. According to Sports Blind people, the Arsenal are among the clubs chasing his signature um, and will face plenty of competition. Apparently, Gladbach of Borussia Mönch and Gladbach have already opened talks. Leverkusen, Wolfsburg, and Hoffenheim are all monitoring stuff. Obviously, when you see a 16-year-old and all of that, you're going to see Ajax and Arsenal. I'm surprised I have not seen Borussia Dortmund linked. Never seen my man play. Don't know nothing about my man. Going to do my research about my man, but just for the sake of him being a young player, potentially a player of tomorrow, I don't mind that people. And it wouldn't surprise me if making progress as a 16 year old into the under 19 side, this is a bit of wash just to get a new contract and all of those sort of things, people. Um, what article is this with Martinelli? We'll get into that in a second, people. I want to read that. Let's see what say that is saying. But just before we get into that, let's go back see what's being said i wanted to see this maitland now sends mikel arteta oh well can't see what he's saying ainsley maitland now sends sends mikel arteta messages arsenal loney thrives under sam allardyce let's see what's being said here big up yourself my guy i'm good man i'm good i'm good Let's scroll down, people. You know, as you lot know, Maitland now he wants to play in midfield. He started the last six games. Not that he hasn't convinced in any, but nobody's. I don't think any Arsenal fans are sitting there going, "Yeah, he's a midfielder now." But you know, six games isn't enough time to really showcase. I would say what I will say is, you know, you put a shift in, you get about. It's not that you you're you're you're, you're underwhelming. You're not necessarily standing out. And I would say if you're going to play midfield. Your end product, there's been a couple of, couple of times he's had chances to get goals or assists or just be better in the final third and let them down. Apparently, you know, he's once again reiterated that he wants to play centre mid when he returns to Arsenal in the summer. Um, and, you know, you're doing all you can really and truly to prove that. You know, I don't know if the 23-year-old will be anything more than a squad player in such, um, but it is what it is, people. And he's been part of a of a good West Brom side in recent weeks. You know, they've lost just twice. You know, they've conceded four goals and they play, they've been playing quite well. Um, he went on to say, as you look can see here, you know, you risk being a jack of all trades, master of none. He said versatility can be a positive or a negative. It depends on your outlook. And I think with Ainsley Maitland now, the problem is a problem for you is because you haven't nailed down right back or centre midfield. If you was evidently a centre midfielder that can do a job at right back, I think everybody would know that. Or a right back able to play in midfield, I think everybody knows that. I think you've had good games. The few good games, the few games you've had at Arsenal in midfield, you've played well. You've also had a bit of shocking ones. You know, he'd been up and down in, in, in midfield, man. But we'll have to see what happens. But he said, sometimes you're stuck in a position where you're waiting for a chance and you can play anywhere because of your versatility. In fact, he said, sometimes you become a main player straight away and it doesn't affect you. But sometimes you can be caught by it. And that happened to you initially. I want to play in the centre of the pitch because I feel comfortable there. And there's a lot of things I can bring by playing in the middle. Again, you've been called up to England and play the Arsenal significantly at fullback, that might be something you should look at. But fair play, if you back yourself, you've got the opportunity, go and show it. He said, you control the game from there, and I think my attributes helps me to do that. You do need to be better on the ball, do things in less touches, be sharper and have better, you know, make sure you're passing and your end product is crisp all the time. So I'm based on what you're saying, I'm not really seeing it, even at West Brom, but he's saying, this is a chance to show I'm capable of in that midfield role rather than sitting on the bench all season. And Facts, you know, prove that you can you can have a job. I do think you you know, based on the game against Newcastle, I think Joe Willock outstood you. But I do think, you, based on what I I thought, you know, you, I'd rather ch give you a chance in midfield than Maitland than than Joe Willock apologies. But there's got to be a reason as to why you haven't. Um, you know, you haven't really shown you can distribute the ball. You muck in and put in a shift, but it's not really enough. Um, and he and he he went on he went on to say the gaffer is very honest and will tell you anything. And we'll tell you anything you need to hear. He's straight to the point with how he feels. You can either put your head down and take the criticism as a negative or you can take it in a positive way. He only says these things because he cares and he wants us all to improve. I love the direct approach he has. You know, maybe Arteta wasn't straight and direct with people. But yeah, man. You have to see. We spoke about that yesterday. I know there's no truth in that, so I'm not going to bore myself with that, people. 
You know, I'm sure you've all seen the new Arsenal Adidas stuff. It's a shame that we can't win games, but we have some nice kits and whatnot. Let's see here, people. Again, this is the same old article. Apparently, Patrick Van Aanholt says all options are open regarding his future, as he would with his contract expiring in the summer, being a free agent and being 30 years of age. you got one big move, maybe a next big chance of a significant payday. Um, he's been linked with Arsenal um, and, and apparently could sign a new deal. Apparently, Van Aanholt revealed he had talks with PSV when quizzed on where his career will take him next. He said, I spoke with PSG in the winter last year. That was an option. I have not spoke with Ajax yet. I'm transfer free in the summer, so I'll keep all options open. We'll see what happens. So again, it seems like Arsenal maybe have moved on from him, but who knows in that regards? Who truly knows, folks? Make sure you're hitting the like button. Apparently, Martinelli disagrees with Mikel Arteta over role at the Emirates. Gabriel Martinelli appears to disagree with Gunner's, Gunner's boss, Mikel Arteta, over his best position in the team. Um, let's see where, let's see the actual comments, people. Is there any comments? We know he likes, he plays centre mid a lot and things like that. But let's see what he said. Apparently, Robert and Martinelli are centre forwards, but with the squad balance that we have at the moment to play on those positions on the left, we don't have five players. We are using one left winger to play as a left back and he is not a left back. So we're trying to adapt to the situation that we have today, trying to create out to create an amount of goal threat that can be successful for the team. That's part of managing the players we have. Um, apparently, Martinelli's allegedly disagreed. Speaking last year, he said... I really like playing on the left end. It is my favourite position. I give my, myself to the maximum for the team. I always give 100% for my team to, to end the game's winning. So, yeah, he prefers to play on the left. This is why, for me, I see you as Alexis Sanchez. I've seen Alexis be a world-class player on the right, on the left and centrally. I see no reason Martinelli can't do that. I think he's a striker long-term, but I don't really care. You know, you should be able to play across all of them, affect the game in all of them um, and all of those sort of things. And I think he will develop in that, man. And this is what I'm saying, man. They're recycling stuff. So, yeah, man, it's an old article, but we've gone through that. Anything new in the in the life of Arsenal? don't think there is apart from this Donnie I'm going to do my research on yeah man it just looks like we just have to prepare for the Europa League people unfortunately so yeah man based on the if you if you believe that the articles this week we're getting over Mars is coming back we're getting Edward um we're, we're, we're going back for our we're doing these things and all of this sort of crap man but we'll have to know man I don't know why they keep recycling these articles but it is where it is man Do you think we'll sell? They'll sell Chambers. Probably. Well, he's got a year left. Probably have to let him go. And what do I think of Mavropanos? I did my loan report came out yesterday. Cheeky plug, like all, like all of them. You know, you can check, you can check it out and know my exact thoughts. Um, if we get Champions League, anything's possible. But I don't think we're going to sign him. Big up everybody. Please make sure you're hitting those like buttons. I do you know what? Yeah, I'm not. You're not wrong, but if I'm honest with you, I can see why Xhaka plays ahead of Maitland now in that role because Xhaka tries to pass the ball forward and things like that. I mean, there's not really a standout attribute I can see in Maitland now's gameplay in midfield. He runs about and puts in a shift, but so does Joe Willett. But that's not enough. I don't really see the quality on the ball, really and truly. We need to finish our food tonight. Simple as that. They should. We have to rely on them too much. And I think that tells you where we're at. That's it. That's it, OB. You know, remember, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. When our players are, when other players are screaming, it was long staff in it. You know, it, the energy is different. Do you know what, Prince? I don't think he's a centre mid, but I'd see no reason why he can't have a career there. If he wants to have a career there and he's willing to concede, I might not be playing for the top teams. Then what can anyone tell him? In If he backs himself, he backs himself. But I, I agree with you. You know, you could have been a very good right back. Very good right back, and he still can, but it is where it is, man. Bro, he does play the ball more forward than Maitland now. Like, and, 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 and I, I feel sick saying that. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> there's always one, man. There's always one. But listen, people, there's really nothing more to speak on. I think I'm on Rance's channel now, so I'm going to go quickly, you know, freshen up and go on that. Please make sure you join me later for the watch along. And obviously after the watch along, there's live reaction. And then tomorrow, which is Friday, we'll start previewing the Spurs game and whatnot. The grind don't stop. I can't stop. If you haven't hit the like button, please do. Please make sure you're following um, 
me across all my socials you know we've had 300 odd people for the best part of being here i really appreciate you guys man i'll be back in a minute you know thank you very much for those listening on twitch on youtube big up all the members them you know big up all the super chats i appreciate it big up everybody just here man um it is what it is man prince i'll see you there man um how long are you going to be live for we're gone my guy but i'm back later i'm back later you know good all good things have to come to an end but you can't get rid of my face yeah, man. Stay well, everyone. I'll be back later, man. You know, hopefully I'll, if you're in your lunch break over here in the UK, if you're just waking up in America, if you're going to sleep in another nation, hopefully I've given you lots some value in these in this hour of 14 minutes. Big up, everyone. I'm out. I'll see you lot later.